hit the gym, get a new haircut, take a shower, get the fuck out of here with your normie advice. It's all about face, height, and frame. If you're not in the top 20% of men, there is no way in hell you're going to get laid. God, you wouldn't believe the number of times I've been rejected for being 5'9". <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think it. Is. Like, be honest with you, though. See if you stink, you got no chance. No, I'm telling like, you. I'm now. telling you right now. If you don't agree, sure, you got no hope. Yeah. During the last session before the lockdowns, we had one of these specimens. Throughout the night, he literally said all of this, shit, except the part about manlets. Like some of the stuff is true to a certain extent. But, like, let's be honest, you're chasing the long girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if yeah. that's what you're interested in, you're not going to have a good late time. We had a guy who was just so self-absorbed, it was infuriating. Anything you or your character tried to do, he would chime in and put down. Meanwhile, he'd get miffed at any deviation from his goals and plans. As an aside, he was just also the worst to be around. He'd make noises with his body, like cracking bones and... Ugh, no. <laughs> and egregious belches. Genuinely discomforting. See, for me, see like AR, ASMR? Uh. <laughs> yeah, please, that's vile. <laughs> the absolute dirty bitch. <laughs> Try to roleplay to get into the game despite being shy and quiet. That guy repeatedly talks over me and goes off on a tangent. Go quiet and stop trying to engage as much. That guy. Anon, you're so antisocial. This is a role playing game, you know. Try to interject in one of his conversations, just so I can say my thing happened before scene change. Would you let me finish? God! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know, there's nothing worse. I, I'm not really one of those types, but like, see, whenever like, there's a like, really shy quiet You're type. the one who talks over everyone, oh, though. Oh, yeah. See, in any game I've been in with you, James, it's just, you know, guys, do you want to hear a really good idea? <laughs> Do you want to hear? No, no, no. Everybody's talking. Right. You're like, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, this is... Do you want to see a really good thing? Do you <laughs> no. want to know? Listen to my idea. <laughs> Am I that guy? Yeah, you're always that guy. Yeah. Well, but people I... like you. So. Yeah, I suppose. I like to think people like me at least. <laughs> or people, maybe I like you, so yeah. maybe I think they like you. <laughs> I don't know. This guy in my current 5th edition game makes anime girl characters constantly. Nice. They often you know what, die. Like, seriously. <laughs> They often die. He didn't seem to mind that much. His character died last session and he had made a new one without telling people what the f*** he made. We all fall down a trap and he was at the bottom. He had an undead T-Rex. What? That sounds pretty and, cool. And had... I had to look at the game. It's 5th edition. <laughs> and had used it as a distraction to attack us while our back was turned. And he had a small dragon. Okay. We get into a fight and the T-Rex and his dragon die. We eventually kill him. <laughs> I got three nat twenty on Sorlock Eldritch Blast antagonizing blast combo thing, which demolished seventy hit points instantly. He was dead, but some homebrew sh said he was still conscious despite being dead. I asked him out of character if he wanted to play this character or not, or if I could just kill her. He doesn't answer, so I take that as a do what you want. And boy, was that a mistake. He said, "Well, now I don't have a character." And left quite aggressively. Afterwards in the group chat he called me a prick. I would have been fine with this if it were not for the fact he presented himself as a villain. And didn't actually tell me he didn't want to die. I was convinced he had worked with the DM to make an enemy with player levels. That's that's what I would have thought. Honestly, yeah. The, like, I'm sorry, if Dinosaur shows up, I don't and know where I'd have a bottom of a pet. Um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna assume I would that's... think, oh, they've been working with the DM and they're like a yeah. player villain. Yeah. That's like, what I would think. And player villains can be a lot of fun, yeah. but they need to be done very well. But yeah. this was not a player villain. This guy's just... <laughs> This guy's just off, you know what I mean? Like, like, he enjoys anime. What more do I need to say? And for you boys that were guarding in the last video, because I said anime was cringe. Okay, look, it's not that bad. I know it's not that bad. But if you've got an anime profile picture and trying to defend anime on in the YouTube comment section, I'm calling you cringe. I'm sorry. Yeah. My GM was a that guy, but he was a fun one. He did the cliche screwing people over because they didn't freeze their actions right thing. One time... He made me accidentally do 9-11. How <laughs> do you just accidentally, accidentally do, do 9-11? Oh, hold on. Sorry, guys. It was a really crazy night, but I ended up doing an Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Al-Qaeda? <laughs>
Yes, I will elaborate. Be us. Edgy stick teenagers. Playing 5th edition at high school. Be playing as a priest who worships the sloth gods. Yes, I know. That's your dog. Have ability to summon huge ass ground sloth skeleton demons of varying sizes by praying. At a huge tree village filled with lizard men. They're amassing an army to defend themselves. Summon two large ground sloth demons. Never specify where. The GM makes them spawn at the top of the f***ing tree village. They f***ing topple the whole thing, killing at least a few thousand lizard men. Oh my god. (laughs) Commit seppuku and get tortured by sloth gods for all eternity. Well, it didn't turn out as bad as what I expected. No, but... It kind of... Yeah, he did actually commit (laughs) 9-11. Or at least... uh, Sloth, lizard man, um, d- analogue <laughs> to it. I don't know. Wasn't that bad, to be honest with you, you know? Currently D&Ding online right now. I'm going to have to stop you right there. That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Had a guy break out his switch in the middle of a session because he got bored and couldn't do anything. When it came to his turn, he just told everyone to wait a minute because he was fighting a Mewtwo on Smash. <laughs> Oh, God. So we just sat there for a moment in awkward silence before the DM just moved on to the next player. Guy also has the nerve to complain about his character not being able to do anything, even though they're the weakest character in the party. And the way his character is set up, they don't actively do anything anyway, and will sometimes do this to <gasps> over the party. I'm just going to put in, you know, soy face, <laughs> and we'll just move on to the next comment, I think. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to talk to you about our new affiliate, Reroll. Reroll is a D&D 5th edition character builder app. Now, everyone needs a character sheet app for a tabletop game, but what makes Reroll stand out above all the rest is its character art. I personally find the character art really, really cool. It has this beautiful retro pixel art aesthetic, and they are continually adding new races and items, so you can customise it whatever way you want. They currently have 14 supported races, over 150 weapons, and over 400 pieces of armour you can mix and match from to really make your character come to life. And the best part, you can have your own little cute companion, like a little baby penguin, a flying kitty, a stupid looking pug, or my personal favourite, a little corgi. And the best thing about Reroll, it has a free version with limited character art, so you can try before you buy and see if you like it or not. We personally think it's an amazing app that will just improve your overall enjoyment of tabletop role-playing games. Reroll is on Apple, Android, Desktop, and if you use our coupon code NECKBEARDIA at checkout, you get 10% off. It's a great affiliate that we think you guys will love, but enough of that. Let's get back to the video. Literal fur fag. Rotten teeth, stoved-in looking face, no jawline. Skinny fat to the extreme with massive protruding belly. Oh, that's like the most disgusting part of sheep. Ugh. Loud and insistent. Finds his way into my city's local friendly game store scene. Proceeds to ruin every RPG he weasels his way into through non-stop murder hoboing and complete disregard for other players, DMs, decorum and just personal etiquette in general. Smells like sour <laughs> milk. <laughs> People begin gatekeeping him from RPGs. He moves on to Magic the Gathering. It's just as insufferable, but the Magic the Gathering is too large and too dependent on organised play to successfully gatekeep him. Tries war games. War game crowd too base to even acknowledge him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <late. laughs> but store happy to sell him thousands of dollars of minis he'll never paint or use. Post irrelevant, cringy shit to the friendly local game store's social media. Found out years later that he used to LARP in another town, and that during an overnight event, he sanitized. Oh my god! He sanitized a butt plug that another guy had used on him by putting it in a bowl of water. I'm like, oh my god! That's absolutely vile. Oh. His, his twin. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you actually nearly eat? Yeah. No. <laughs> His Twitter is full of gross diaper fetish stuff. Yeah, just fucking no. Yeah, like, 
I'm not going to have any furry di- furry sympathizers in the comments on this one. Get away, the you, fuck. Get, you, get away up the fucking road and stop, stop biting people. people. Like, you boys make your own decision. I'm not going to get into anything about furries in this video. I'm just not in the Talk right? amongst yourself in the comments because fuck that. I'm not getting into this. Hashtag not all furries. Like that. Get the fuck out. The biggest that guy I played with in college was actually missing a segment of his brain. Jesus. What? Seriously. You could see the dent in the skull from whatever accident had caused it. This gives him some benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but he was still a bit of a prick. <laughs> oh my god. He was very manipulative and would occasionally steal dice from oh, people. Don't no, touch no, my no, fucking don't, dice. Don't, no, don't even touch my dice. Don't even touch my dice. That's not even funny. And he just loved never giving anyone the actual story for how he lost that chunk of his head. The last I saw of him, he got kicked out of college for bringing <laughs> real, actual swords into the dorm. Nice. In terms of his role playing, he was inconsistent at best. His characters were always pretty weebish. He'd find whatever excuse he could to have a katana, regardless of how oh, appropriate no. it was to the setting. And his characters had some pretty drastic mood swings. Some sessions they'd be cheery and helpful, other sessions they would be dark and broody and just as likely to attack you as the enemy. I'm not 100% certain if this is reflected on his mood swings, since he always seemed to be pretty cheerful out of character, but he was also a bit of, <laughs> he was also a bit of a prick out of character. <laughs> and he knew he was a prick and thought it was funny. <laughs> well, you know, I can't really blame the guy all that much. However, I am happy that it's not a thing anymore. See, like, See guys that try and talk to me about oh me katanas they're so good no they're not cool no they're not they're not cool anymore weaves the this <laughs> really cool. te- behind I, you yes, that's that's what never the person that's right katanas are, katanas are cool looking sword yeah they are cool but, I'd love to have some but then if people come in the house and be like Eah! yeah I'll say, I, no I can pick myself to actually own something like that gets angry at others for how they play when it has no effect on him and doesn't take up any time only cares about loot and killing. Not even combat, just killing. Once nearly caused a total party kill to get some gold when the DM was already generous when it came to loot. Constantly runs off to do his own thing. Once somebody went to go make lunch and he still wasn't finished. Doesn't share loot. Completely ignores objectives if it doesn't involve killing or fetch quests. Who the fuck fuck likes fetch quests? I know, but let's be honest, there's a lot of like... You need to get the MacGuffin to do I the know. thing to do the thing. thing to do you know that. what I mean? A lot of people just yeah. fall back on that for basic quest lines. Thinks charisma checks are mind control. <laughs> <laughs> and constantly abuses this on less experienced DMs. Thinks the game is run in Skyrim logic. <sighs> Once you stealth in an empty hallway with a guard staring <laughs> Okay. Murder Hobo and tries to hijack the game to be his own playground. Bitch to the DM for giving him a useless item when he just didn't know what it did. Whenever somebody has a problem, he tries to make sure others know how much worse he has it. No teamwork at all. I do mean at all. He never uses his class as ability. If it doesn't involve looting or killing, like the time he just stood there when he ne- <laughs> when we needed a door open <laughs> or we needed to interrogate someone, will try to derail others' plans. Never pays attention to the game. Outright will lie and cheat. I was just playing my character. It was for the XP. I'm telling you that now. He wasn't that guy. He was just a goog. <laughs> yeah. He was just a goog. Try, <laughs> try, not, try not to hold that against him too much. It's just what they're like. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like slagging off the English and saying, oh, the English, they're too smug. You know what I mean? It's like, like no they offense. Know. <laughs> but it's just what they're like. You can't hold that against them, you know? And around the thread off for the last post. Um, be average looking autistic retard. Friends and girls avoid me. Think it's because of my looks. Lift, cut, shower, brush teeth, the works. New friends and girls attracted to me until I open my retarded mouth. Then it's back to square one. Change personality to be generic and agreeable no matter what. New friends and girls are attracted once again. Now I realise they do shit that makes my skin crawl and I can't talk about it without becoming less agreeable or generic or just become an asshole that I was. Scrap friends and girls and now left purely for Jesus, my health and to get high. Genuinely happy. I ended up in the right place. 
It's not the place I thought I would be, but it's the right place. Well, at least he's happy. At least you know? he's happy. At least he's happy, and that's all you that matters. Do you. you do you. You do you. Happy Pepe. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that thread, and there's a lot more of it. We might do more of it. I enjoyed it. You know, if you guys want, leave your own that guy stories down below, and we get enough good ones, then you know, how it is. We'll, do, video. we'll make a video about it. If you have enough of your own good ones, um, you know, all that type of jazz. Um, is there anything else, Megan? No. No, I don't think so. Check out the advert. Helps us out a lot. Subscribe. You know, the usual. And we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, see you then. Bye. Psst. By the way, Fresh Prince is out tomorrow. Come check it out. <laughs>